Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Calior. We are June 25th, 2002. It is 11.23 EDT. And uh, I am covering the Blood Hunt news uh, that no one else is apparently covering. Not That's not true. Uh, if you want another source of reliable information and very informative information, I recommend you go check Motion Gaming. Uh, that's on his Twitter and YouTube. He will post like very informative, quick, like bite-sized information pieces. Uh, he's very informative in that way. Uh, he has a nice uh, he has a nice little video on how to optimize the settings of your game in Blood Hunt. Uh, it's a very, uh, very nice video to, to, to follow. Uh, but I like to cover the news in the way that I'm trying to... I read them and make you understand exactly why the news are, are the way that they are. Uh, currently, we are uh, 18 days... Um, hold on, let me check. 18 days, 16 hours uh, before the end of Season 1 Retribution. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, Ranked and the feedback of Ranked. We're going to talk about uh, rotations and the modes of rotations. And after that, the blog post that we got this week from the Blood Hunt team. Uh, we're going to go through all of this. Um, first of all, first and foremost, and let me do a little transition here. Um... Just want to like quickly address the current situation that's happening in the United States. And here's my part that I'm going to like give to you if there's any Americans that are listening to this and that are thinking about moving to Canada. Uh, this is the map of Canada. If you're trying to uh, get away from any sort of conservatism, uh, and trying to move to Canada, I would say maybe not go into those three regions here, those three provinces of Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Like, nothing's stopping you. It's just that they are very conservative provinces. They are an extension of the Bible Belt of the United States. It's just moved up uh, north, basically. Um, I would say, especially like in the uh, tendency of some people to work in T in, uh, in IT and computers and all that sort of stuff, game development, I would suggest British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec. I'm here in Montreal. Um, these are like more, for more, far more open-minded communities that you're going to find there. Uh, and I would also add that uh, in Quebec, yes, the official language is French, but if you're living in cities, like in big urban cities like Montreal or Ottawa, there's absolutely no problem if you are 100% uh, English-speaking person. Uh, they usually don't have any uh, issues with that. Uh, usually compensate and people are very nice about it. Uh, it's when you go into the different regions of Quebec where you'll find people that don't necessarily know how to talk in English and all that sort of stuff. So anyways, that was a quick PSA from a Canadian letting you know, uh, letting you know about this. That's out of the way. Uh, wanted to uh, tell you first and foremost a little disclaimer for myself. Um, Uh, yeah, so Ottawa's in Ontario, but on Quebec's border. Yeah, it's just kind of, you know, it's always... I, even I, you know, I've been here my entire life and I still forget, you know. Yeah, they got no region. Um, we, uh, just just as a little, uh, a little disclaimer just for myself, um, before I move on, uh, we know that Blood Hunt currently is not in a good state. Like, we know... We know this. We know all of this. The developers know this, like more than more than us, and probably even before us. Very likely before us. Um, and currently on Twitter, the community has been, um, you know, has been like slowly collapsing under the weight of people that have been, uh, you know, talking about how it's a dead game, 
and all of this. It's never going to recover, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's been good to notice that, you know, the, 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 the people that want this game to succeed, uh, they've been they've been coming out more. Uh, people like me, that I'm just like, I, I love this game. I'm going to play it until they unplug the servers. Uh, I'm going to keep repeating this. Uh, there's still people that really like this game. Uh, but the people that have been spreading a lot of toxicity have been... Uh, pointing a lot of fingers at different people in the community and uh, not to name names uh, but they have been uh, tagging a lot of people like accusing them of being essentially brown nosers uh, for the devs and for the game and some sort of you know weird perception um, oh okay hold on let me let me fix this thank you I'm gonna Okay. Um, yeah, let me get this like that. Okay, that should be good. Um, yeah, so uh, a bunch of people that have been, um, yeah, uh, straight up accusing a bunch of people of, um, sorry, I just noticed that I forgot to turn off the sound on my game. Yeah, okay, so I was just, I, I would just want to, like, mention that, you know, in relaying those news here, I am not trying to make excuses for devs or their choices or the words that they're saying, okay? What I'm doing this is just relaying what they're saying, trying to explain what they're saying what their words mean in case some people ne don't necessarily like know how to read between the lines or don't you know because specific words about the issues that they care aren't being said it doesn't mean that they're not being you know taken care of and all of this um i th and that's a that's a very weird thing to say these days about you know gaming opinions to, i take the devs at their word um personally personally like i've been i uh, like i haven't been in game dev myself i've been in uat which is user acceptance testing for uh one of the companies that i work with for about like two years and a half so uh i have you know kind of at least the basic experience of what's happening um uh what's happening just to, just in development in general for uh uh, for programs and i also listen to uh on twitter i listen to game dev twitter uh which you know like devs between each other like you know talking about their job and talking about their issues and talking about uh gamers perceptions of what exactly is happening internally and how like in the majority of cases uh gamers gamers are wrong about their you know they're just fantasies made up about what's happening behind the scenes um personally like i've been following this like for many many years and what's happening with blood hunt it still tracks like it's still on par with what happens to a lot of um you know small studio releasing a game uh, first patch of a new game uh, uh, you know like what's like the, the communication with the uh, communication with the community although it's been very great here um, like all of this is just like it makes sense the issues that they've been having are the same kind of issues that other companies have been having with their new games uh, with uh, you know always online or very combat focused games like all of this so far is absolutely normal um and it's just that uh they are not a triple a team um triple a game dev with uh you know a whole bunch of uh like a whole bunch of uh, like teams that are outsourced or internal that are gigantic teams to help them like test and get out uh, patches, you know, at a very inhuman speed. The fact that AAA games are being able to do that 
is very is you know it's sometimes it's a bit of magic when they're able to do it but they're also doing crunch time a lot a lot of crunch time and this is a team at shark mob that doesn't seem to agree with crunch time they seem to be very you know having a healthy normal life they seem to advocate so you know it's just a question of you know they're doing the right thing they they you saw what happened when they tried to rush out a patch it created more problems so they're taking their time they're not being pushed by the community they're just doing like they're doing what they think they need is best to do in order to respect them and respect the game that they've made i believe in this game and i'm just relaying this to you this is all i'm getting from there i don't have any like i'm not part of the inner circle i'm not an ambassador of uh, of blood hunt so i don't have any inside info all i'm seeing is what i can take from twitter that's simply that and a bit of experience that's all i have like to 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 do this so you know to address any concerns that people that may think that i'm brown nosing devs just get that out of your head uh i like getting confirmation and validation from devs about what i'm saying this is great like i re really appreciate it um but yeah anyways just a little psa about myself now let's get to the news um here we go so after this i want to say that today Today, we've got Esports Gaming Lead that is doing a Blood Hunt tournament this day, this day of recording. Uh, at, you see uh, the times here in EDT at 1 EDT, which is about an hour and a half. Uh, there's uh, trials in uh, Europe. And then there's, uh, in the afternoon, you're going to have trials in North America. And then, uh, I believe it's next weekend... Uh, there's going to be like more trials in this and you've got you know a little prize pool at the end which is always good but it's the kind of thing it's the kind of active tournament that the um that the community needs right now uh because we are uh as you're gonna see we are about three weeks away from getting a patch that will help uh fix things a little bit this is the kind of thing that um this is the kind of thing that the community needs and needs more of. The um, uh, the events that were happening uh, last weekend were absolutely fun. The uh, Jeopardy round, uh, the, the 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 kill tournament between uh, Glocktane and Viken was very fun. Uh, you know, all of this is the kind of stuff uh, that comes from the community. That needs to happen more often so really i have to emphasize this if you have an idea if you want to start a tournament if you want to start anything that's that's fun that's related to blood hunt the community appreciates it and really loves it and also it appreciates it even more when you include people that have been playing the game people that have been supporting the game not necessarily Top, top Twitch streamers with a lot of numbers. I understand the reasoning behind it to um, get a lot of, um, get as many people excited about Blood Hunt. It's just that right now it's not, it serves no purpose necessarily to get a lot of people excited about it. Maybe when the patch is going to come out, that's going to be a time to do it. Um, uh, right now they're just trying to keep the game alive but this is the this is the kind of thing that we need we need to see more of um good uh another thing uh to talk about is that as oh there we go we're gonna reconnect to the game <laughs> so uh remember uh was it last week or the previous two weeks i remember i don't remember they there was the survey about the store about how we were getting um you know some voted items back inside the store some very popular items inside the store and last time we got uh as a reply at the end of the oh, sorry at the end of the seasonal section of the store uh we had the flamingo here and the dreadhawk that returned 
And now we have, as promised, the toxic hair color and the undead scene uh, haircut. So that is now in the store and is going to remain there until the end of the season. Uh, good. So these were just like quick couple of things to talk about before we start. Now, we're going to talk about the uh, ranked weekend that we had last weekend and the feedback that came from it. Um, so what we have is, uh, of course, like we've got people like the, the PS5 Blood Hunt fan base uh, that are very excited. They were very excited to see uh, Q times uh, be better um, and... Uh, just, just Q times were low. PS5 players were having fun, um, and that was because crossplay was turned off a lot. Uh, ranked was back. These were two big factors that got a lot of PS5 players back into playing Blood Hunt, and the feedback about this on their end was heard very, very, very loudly and clearly uh, when uh, it was turned off. Uh, for the uh, the rest of the week, uh, there were complaints about it. So clearly, like that's what they want. They want crossplay off, and also um, ranked. Now, uh, following this, uh, Blood Hunt put out a uh, put out a survey, which was mostly about uh, it was about rank weekend and crossplay off. Uh, so there was, there was a lot of, uh, there were a lot of interesting comments that came out of this. Uh, let me just put that in chat. Uh, there's a lot of interesting comments coming out of this. Uh, it's, it's worth, it's worth checking out, uh, a lot of stuff that was, that was coming out of this. Um, mainly that a lot of people liked Ranked coming back, uh, so they can, grind for whatever level of ranked rewards they were trying to get um so they had finally that chance turned on turned back on so a lot of people were grinding all weekend long me myself uh i did that like i'm, I'm you know i'm i've got a little bit to grind in order to get uh, to silver because i want the silver tattoo i think it's awesome uh i'm not gonna grind further than that um so, uh, yeah, and, and some people, um, me, myself, I found that, uh, playing without, uh, playing without PS5 players, uh, in the, in the other modes was, uh, interesting, uh, because now, uh, this very, uh, that, that's when I saw the very, like, much difference between having a lobby with PS5 players and a lobby with, P with PC players. Uh, I don't know if it's because it was ranked specifically, but it, competition was tough, and uh, ranked has a different vibe than just solo blood hunt. Uh, a bunch of people were not happy about the fact that solo blood hunt was not available. Um, I believe we're going to have a tweet about this uh, at some point uh, very uh, very soon. Um, uh, another thing that was uh, discussed was the 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 need to have a uh, ranked for um, uh, ranked for duos and trios. Like here, Slayerina says, um, rank is really not great. Lobby dies so fast I barely have time to get one kills before I, I get to the end game. Sometimes I, I get RP just by surviving. I have not seen one play the whole game. Honestly, probably the worst mode, make rank duo or trio. Which is, you know, they've already acknowledged that ranked, ranked mode as it is needs improvement. Uh, they have acknowledged this. The whole community acknowledged this. That was the original downfall of ranked, of why ranked wasn't that popular at the beginning. It was, was a lot of people came into it and then said... This doesn't feel, this doesn't feel optimal. This doesn't feel like the best thing. And then uh, David, the uh, you know producer 
uh, the, the, the director of uh, Shark Mob replied, uh, this is the longer term idea or allow ranked to support group variants. It requires some features currently missing like handling, shared costs slash MMR, etc. And rejoin quite the ordeal to add support for. We'll see if we'd add something more early for a quick event or test interest. Again, to repeat it, adding ranked is not just a simple switch. You have to think of consequences. This has to be hard coded to have a switch. And it's not the same thing uh, having solo with a uh, solo with solo with ranked is I would say like probably the easiest one to figure out with do and trio. Then you have. Yeah, like he says, rejoin features. Like, how does that count? And especially if you consider that you're queuing into duo or trio as a solo or you're queuing into trios as a duo, uh, you uh, I can already imagine the number of people that would be extremely frustrated to be, I don't know, a, a, a diamond rank. Uh, two people that are diamond rank and then suddenly like a bronze player is joining them. And then the frustration that comes out of it because, of course, you know, uh, because of lower skill, probably, of bronze, they would say, like, the, per the person's throwing. Can you match us with actually, you know, with diamond players? The thing is that right now, uh, matchmaking is, you know, it's not the best because of the number of players. So that's still, that's still an issue. The MMR... The handling shared costs of, you know, handling ranked for each person inside your group. Um, and also, you know, facing an entirely cracked team that would be on trios, you know, like, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be happy necessarily to run into, like, Naysayer X, let's say, and his group of trios going against me. Like, I am, a, like... Me, myself, I am obliterated. I'm nothing good about, uh, you know, I'm nothing good for my own trio. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot more variables than simply just solo where they can handle one one set of data. Like, how can I say? Just one data per character uh, is very easy. But then when you start having groups and then you have to just like, you know, share what exactly the rewards are not exactly the rewards are going to be but like uh, how like the hidden mmr behind it and all of that basically that's what he's saying like it's much more complicated to factor in uh and right now they have bigger issues than just adding you know then going into the um cluster bomb that would be adding you know duos and trios ranked ranked to duos and trios i should say uh, another comment, uh, came here, hold on, just linking this in chat. Uh, yeah, there's someone that was asking, like, please let us have duos ranked this weekend. Duos ranked doesn't currently work. It's not like we could just turn on. Would have tried that a long time ago then. Uh, group rank has specific needs that need to be handled before we can do such a thing. We do want to get a place where ranked could be in groups in the future. There you go. Uh, that is that is a want. That is in the wish list. That may happen in the future. Um, okay, and some people were asking uh, about. Uh, just leave ranked in, please. Just add regular so solos back after the weekend is done. Uh, he says, we can't keep both. It's not sustainable, especially in the beginning of the week where we see least play. Basically, at the beginning of the week, not a lot of players come in. Um, queues get longer. Matchmaker takes longer time. It's not, it's not viable and sustainable to have, uh... You know, to keep having low cues for everyone. That was his answer. There's going to be more about this later for like very soon. Uh, here. Uh, however, the 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 um, the feedback that we got and that I, I mentioned earlier that 
a bunch of people were not happy about not having a uh, solo mode. Don't ever take out solo modes again is the only mode I play. When you take it out, I'm forced to stop playing. David says, we know, and it's like this for all three modes. Uh, the audiences only slightly overlap, but necessity dictates we need two for weekdays like today. Solos will not get rotated specifically again, it looks like. So that's from the feedback. There's a lot of people that apparently have gone. What's up with solo with solo blood hunt? They've specifically said, and I've seen this a lot, that without solo blood hunt, they just not play the game at all it's not like oh i'm gonna try another queue it's just like no i'm not even logging inside the game so the feedback from david is just like solos will not be rotated solos will still be there in the rotations to come until the next patch hey vincent cassie hi good to see you drop by <laughs> um okay so uh, another another kind of feedback that we got was yeah <laughs> uh, solo just exactly like what he says right there rank needs extra lives that's it and David replied we are testing that internally if it flies we may do a swaparoo that's a technical term we may do a swaparoo on solos to become well ranked with extra lives plus crossplay off and some retuning to the skill separation too. Like I said, it's not just simply adding one thing and expecting the whole ranked experience to just fly. There's other stuff that needs to be taken care of in the background that we don't see. So... I've seen some opinions against it. I've seen opinions for it. Uh, some people say that, no, it's just like, it's gotta be like King of the Hill. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a deathmatch mode. Um, you know, it needs to be one life, one kill. That's it. When you're out, you're out. Um, some people are saying like, we need to make it more like a, a, a deathmatch mode, which is, you know, first person to 20 kills. Um, and then adjust rank according to number of kills, time alive. Don't know exactly how that uh, how that that goes. I've seen. I don't know if the FPS way to see this game is the best way to do it with ranked. But at least you know they're they're testing the idea. They're working on it. They're gonna give us feedback on that. Probably I expect to see like if. You know, if it worked, if it was something that, if it was the experience that we wanted, um, about that. So you know, that was the general feedback that I managed to pick up on uh, Rank Weekend, and the feedback that we got about the first week of rotations. You know, after this weekend had ended, but then, but then, we got. The game mode rotations of the week that we are that we have currently you know have been on so uh they've been saying fellow kindred as mentioned we will continue with our game mode rotations for tomorrow on monday june 20th we will temporarily be rotating duos and ranked solo out and solo blood hunt back in the rotation uh will last the full week until monday the 27th so this is still running right now um as a clarification, because this this is much more this is much more clear to read. I'm just gonna link this in chat again. Uh, so solo blood hunt has been enabled. Trio blood hunt has been enabled. Solo ranked has been disabled. Duo blood hunt disabled. To say that reactions were poor is an understatement. David was absolutely not kidding when he tweeted that duos had much higher numbers than other cues by quite a margin. Duo players were not happy about this because now they have to go into trios with an unreliable third or to go into trios with 
you know, Q not finding a, a third for them, and they go in as duo to fight against trios, which is, you know, I totally understand. Um, it seemed like also that was another uh, another topic, you know, or, or at least, you know, from the reactions that I've seen from people about this kind of change. Uh, it was very clear that a lot of people missed out the blog post that they did the previous week uh, explaining what they were going to do with the rotations. Uh, just communication had not reached them, uh, which is why I am why I'm doing this. It's just there's not enough uh, there's not enough communications about exactly the news going out and reaching out people, even though I'm reaching just. A very small amount of people from the Bloodhound community. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this. If you're watching this through VOD or to my YouTube channel, which I should probably promote at some point, I guess. I'm putting I'm starting to put those on YouTube as well. Even though they're completely what they are. Uh <laughs> and I'm not editing anything. Um so um, yeah, it's it's it seemed that a lot of people like missed the explanation because they were just like, why? Why are you doing this? Logging into game and seeing that duos were disabled or du duos were not there, it was panic, and it, they took to Twitter. Uh, and also, I, I I have to say, and it's gonna and I'm gonna talk about it like very very shortly. This has been of all the topics that have come up since early access about this game and i've monitored like practically everything except maybe discord because discord is very hard to keep track of all the announcements that maybe or maybe like the little tidbits that you can see in like the bug hunt channel uh by official people or people that are helping uh, i've tried it originally and i could you know, I could spend many, many hours trying to go through every message to try to find little tidbits of information. It's not worth it. That's why I'm sticking mostly to Twitter. Um, I have to say that ever since I've been following this game, this, um, the cues has been the most divisive topic uh, of the community. And I've seen uh, there are there are defenders for every single one of the queues, uh, and I mean like literally kind of like if this is disabled, I'm not playing the game. Uh, every mode for every mode said there like if it's solo blood hunt, solo ranked, duos, trios, and people wanting duos and trios to have ranked as well. Uh, it's 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 been. It's been very interesting to say, and the term I'm going to use for this is sh is shit sandwich. The developers have a very hard choice to make, it was what I was thinking at the time, and uh, as we will talk about very soon, uh, it's still a shit sandwich situation for them, uh, given this is all given the current state of the game um yeah so what happened after this after you know everyone talked about this few days went by and then we had a blood hunt post with i i'm not highlighting the blood hunt post i'm highlighting david's post about the blood hunt post uh saying like you know we have first article for you in the series when includes uh, which includes information you've been, uh, we've got coming for you in the next update. And when the improvements we speak about in the article are all based on your important feedback. And David saying first article of quite a few. Also expects expect more details in all areas and perhaps some other things asked f uh, for a lot will see the light of day. Sometimes we have to translate exactly what David is saying. Um, he needs an autocorrect. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're expecting more articles. And this is exactly what it's saying by part one. What is going on with Blood Hunt? So this is going to be like quite a while because I want to go through a lot of the stuff that's written there. Um, 
Let's go. So, salutations, dear, dearest Bloodhound community. As we've detailed in a previous article, we were rotating our, uh, rotating our game modes to reduce the time you had to spend in matchmaking. This is the first article in this series where we detail what's going on and what to expect in the near future. Expect future articles with more information. We had to accept that having all our game modes active at the time with current player base led to much longer wait, waiting times, so the rotations were an effort to resolve this. We also ran the weekend event to determine what events could hold that we will uh, we could hold that we will have the biggest positive impact on our playing experience. What I was telling people, this is an experiment. This is what they're doing. They're shuffling players around into different uh, into different queues. Uh, they're just you know disabling some queues for you to go. Okay, here are my other options. What am I going to choose? What am I going to pick? Do I like it? Do I not like it? And what's my behavior as someone that goes into a specific type of queue? Do I go in another queue? Do I drop it? Am I performing more? Am I performing less? How much time do I do I do I stay inside these queues? This is all stuff that they're looking at on their end. Um, so you know, it's all like if you continue to play, it's all going to be worth it. You know, there are it's valuable data that they keep collecting themselves on their end, particularly in terms of ensuring that nobody more on this later needs to wait more than uh, wait longer than two minutes and 30 seconds getting into a match. We have more on this for you later in the article. But first, let us talk a little bit about what you told us and the feedback you've provided. What we saw was that most of you enjoyed playing with crossplay off during the weekends, and that those of you who played ranked solo on PS5 appreciated being matched with fellow console players, and that you spent less time matchmaking during the peak hours. PS5 players happy, probably going to be crossplay off, probably with ranked. Like crossplay off as a definite, like permanent thing has been like a very strong message I saw. We also observed that we were happy to see the Trio Blood Hunt return, and that the majority want to see more weekend events like the one we held last weekend. However, you also responded that you would like to keep crossplay enabled during the weekends, at least until player count increases, so that you spend less time in matchmaking. We're taking all of this on board in our decision making. So you see what they're doing there? They are setting up the discussion what we're going to talk about right now with hard facts about things about the game and about feedback from players what exactly do you want and now we're going to talk about more stuff hold on coffee break the truth is in the numbers unfortunately the data shows us that our hourly concurrent players is going down meaning returning players, play, players playing the game at, at every hour. Uh, that's going down, and that weekends are the moment where we have slightly more people playing, which is the reason we have to make some tough calls while we are getting the next update done. Fixes to do before the patch gets done. That's the, that's the main issue that they're talking about here. Your sentiment as positive as it was about disabling crossplay during the weekend did not lead to players returning in the scale we were hoping for. Especially not in regions outside of Europe and North America, which means that we simply have to accept that unless players return in these regions, longer matchmaking will have to be a reality for now until the player count increases. Also, we are hearing your criticism of the frequent rotations interfering with your favorite play mode being rotated out, as we've discussed. This is something we must address, though we must accept some concessions. Remember, this is all while we are getting the next update done. So right now, he, they're talking about, here's what we're trying to do with the game until the update is out. Right now, people, even with those things, people aren't returning because what people care about, about this game, is the fixes. And especially the way that people are very, um, oh, what's the word? 
uh, people are very flaky about the games that they play. If they hear, oh, this game has a big patch that's come out and a lot of players are hyped for it and a lot of players are, are happy about it, suddenly they go like, oh yeah, I might try this game again. You know, that's usually how it happens. You know this, you're all gamers. Um, so until people hear that there's a big patch and most of the stuff that people want is gonna be is gonna be fixed. People aren't gonna come back to the game if you're just saying like, "Oh, we've changed the, uh, uh, we we've changed the queues. We've re-enabled ranked a mode that people have been saying online that ranked is bad." I've been advertising that ranked is bad and that be basically competitive people should stay away from the game. Thank you all the all the, uh, the the negative people, like toxic people, putting that out for everyone to hear. You're not helping. Uh, yeah, we're not getting people coming back. We also hear that our uh, that we are too infrequent with our game updates, so we have adjusted our priorities and improved our internal processes to be able to uh, release updates more often, which means more stuff for you, our players. That is something that I've talked about a while ago when I made a huge big thread. Uh, that was started like, yes, we know Blood Hunt, ne Blood Hunt needs to be fixed and Blood Hunt needs to be patched. Uh, I said in that long thread that probably because first studio, first patch, lots of criticism, figuring out exactly what people want to like want and need to get fixed. They're probably internally figuring out exactly how they can reroute processes for everyone, uh, tasks and responsibilities to get, um, uh, in order to like make it more efficient because they probably had a plan okay it's it's not probably they had a plan i didn't even have to ask any of them they had a plan like they already planned for how to deal with patches uh how people were going to work on this uh how people were going to work on uh art you know the art department about like you know planning season two okay planning season two has already been like been done I remember like a few weeks ago, I'd say I'd say even a month ago, uh, that uh, Combat Glue, also known as Samir, inside the, uh, that we all know inside the community that works on Shock Mob, in one of his streams, he said he's seen the design, uh, the design art for costumes for season three. So yeah, they have a plan. They have a plan for things to come. They have a plan to things to, on uh, how things work. It's just that, when you have a plan and then actually, actually you actually have to deal with reality uh that's when you have to be quick and adjust how you're working so probably they already like were already working on stuff and they're just slowly transitioning people into how we can morph our team to make to release quicker updates and updates more often and be more responsive to the community we've noticed that They've been super responsive to the community. Absolutely super responsive. Um, to the point where they've been doing a lot of live things with the live game, you know, using meaning they're using the tools that are already in the game to make to switch some things without necessarily having to patch the game. That is very important because and we're gonna talk about this like very soon. It's not necessarily because they just like have the ability to patch things that they can patch things. Sometimes it's just like, we have some things like the store, uh, they can do some things with the store as it currently is right now, like the in the framework. Uh, they're able to change some things, like we saw earlier, they're able to add the new, they're able to add the hairstyle uh, and the hair color. Uh, they're able to do this, but reworking how the store works it requires an actual patch. Um, so they're reworking all this. Hold on a second. Don't want to chime in with uh, that, but I blame a lot of people in the large communities who lean on negativity as a form of interactions. These kinds of negative content creators have the most influence on the mob. Misery loves company. I absolutely 100% agree. 
uh, with you, Vince and Cassie. I don't know who's, who's talking. If it's the both of you, if it's you, did Vince and Cassie, are you are you one? I've seen you. You're not one person together melded. I know you're two separate entities. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I've seen. I uh, Vince for now. <laughs> Hi, Vince. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, and and it's and I understand and I see that a a huge bunch of these people were are, are talking exactly the way that I was talking when I was in my early twenties. Uh, when I was absolutely cynical for everything. And I can only imagine at, you know, young 20s uh, and growing in on the internet with a... Uh, there's a prevalent... Uh, there's a prevalent sense of um, distrust over game developers. What they're saying what they are promising and what they're delivering, uh, you know, being a dissonance there. Uh, people that are, uh, players that are saying that, you know, it's nothing's ever good enough. Um, you know, if, if you, if you distrust the people that are saying like, these are the numbers, uh, then, you know, what kind of a discussion you're expected to have or what kind of feedback are you expected to have Especially if you're spending your time, you know, shitting on the devs on Twitter and then you're expecting... I've seen this actually, like, from a couple of people, which I won't name, that have actually... that have been absolutely trashing uh, the game and directly tagging uh, developers and asking them, can we get some freebies to compensate for the shit that you're doing? Obviously, no devs re responded to those tweets because you know that's not gonna that's that's not gonna fly. You know, I don't know I don't know about you, but that's not the kind of thing I'm, I, I want to see. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a that's um that's a different topic. That's that's a very if they if if things would be different, they fix reload hit reg then remove enforcer. That's a hit reg. We're gonna talk about like soon. Removed enforcer. I don't know. Um. Well, actually, removing things. We're gonna talk about this very soon. Also, as well. Just gotta you're gonna you're gonna hear what I have to say about that. Okay. So what are we doing about it? First, instead of doing rotations, we will be disabling duels until the next update. Outroar from the community. We will also keep solo blood hunt and trio blood hunt enabled. These modes will stay, it will not be rotated out. As for ranked solos and duos, one of them will be returning as a weekend event for the next four weeks until the ne uh, next big update. Currently, this weekend, duels are up, and David has confirmed that next weekend, solo ranked is going to be up um and then i believe duels will come back and then we'll have a patch so if i understand correctly next weekend uh the weekend of that would be hold on that would be uh july 1st so July 1, 2, 3, and some people have argued to have 4 because of Independence Day in the United States. Uh, that would be officially the last weekend to do to get some ranked points. So if you want to grind to Obsidian, this, like, mark your calendar. This will probably be the last time for this season. Uh, at this point, we have concluded that we must focus on NA and EU in terms of matchmaking for uh, a matchmaking time for now, since the other regions simply do not have the player base to support shorter matchmaking currently. We are mitigating this issue by making sure our region expansion in the matchmaker takes this into account, meaning you will slightly get higher ping, but will also uh, get into a game sooner. Meaning, if you're not in the NA or EU, we will shove you in any queue that we can, so we can so you can play the game. Uh, because 
uh, right now people are talking about matchmaker times. So okay, you don't want matchmaker long matchmaker times, we will shove you into a queue. You'll get higher ping though. And right now that's the only option that we have because again, player base is missing. The focus on the next update is resolving issues that you, our community, have been vocal about. So that is what we have been working on and continue to work on up until the summer update in the middle of July. This update comes with a lot of improvements that are important to you, including addressing the reload bug, which we know is already internally fixed, uh, implementing control improvements for those of you that aren't using mouse or keyboard, which is something that we knew for a very, for at least more than a month that they were working on and that it was going to be a huge thing. Uh, performance improvements, which people have been complaining a lot about. Further balancing on the Enforcer, which we knew that they were going to do because the changes to Enforcer in the last patch uh, were specifically and reportedly made to be just a band-aid fix for the moment. Um, plus more interesting I uh, items for the item store, which we will uh, detail more of our work in the future uh, on these in the future articles. But also, we are working with improving the general gameplay experience, always good, always on the task list, which includes less jitters in movement and other important things that will improve the overall impression of the movement while traversing the game. I will take just a quick, just a quick change here. What he's talking about in jitters and movement, linking in chat, is this. Uh, Mike Dillon says, there's a very common problem with not being able to rotate climbing on corners of walls, regularly glitches out, uh, out on the top of a climb, sometimes glitches all the way back down to the ground when you can't escape the glitched animation, some slide jumps regularly not happening. And David's saying, yes, we have an improvement in the next update for that, and ledges it looks like. This is what it, they're talking about, like less jitters and movement and other games. Uh, and if you remember from last week, they talked, there was mention about the, um, not being able to pick up some weapons that were on the ground because of the state of when, or the state of the guns when they fall, when they explode from the body of the person that gets killed. Uh, that is also, I believe, this is my, my guesstimation, I believe that is also tied to this, about state of things inside the game. Uh, and I think that's also a thing that is tied to, again, the, the game sync between client and server. Uh, furthermore, we're going to change how we are releasing updates. We need to release game, uh, game updates faster. Work has already started on this. We will keep you updated on the progress of this. Already talked about this, it's internal. What else is coming in the next update? For this article, we want to go a bit more in depth about one of the above mentioned improvements and further expand on the rest of articles, beginning with our controller improvements. So, I'm not going to go into all of this. Uh, actually, I would suggest you go you go find uh, Motion Gaming uh, on YouTube. Um, he has a video where he's talking about this patch, but he goes into much more precise and easy to understand explanations exactly on what this means. Um, you can look for yourself. It's easy to decrypt, but I don't want to necessarily go into this. Uh, but basically, it is a lot of changes for controller. Uh, some of the changes that control that the community has asked, and some of them that is like much more than what they've asked. So, and um, I believe they said that there are um, uh, there's more improvements to that, even more improvements coming to that in the future. The creation of these control improvements has taken quite a bit of development time, but since you felt strongly about our system, this had to be a priority for us, as mentioned previously about a month ago. However, there are still a, th a few things we want to add for you, such as the ability to, for you to customize which button does what, very strong ask from the community, which is also something we're working on. We will inform you when we can expect this as soon as we've completed that functionality. That's good. Furthermore, VSync is not available as an option on PlayStation 5 as a measure to prevent screen tearing. There's a caveat to this, however, it is used in, conju in conjunction with VRR. It uh, might still uh, show some tearing with frame rates above 60 Hz. Also, as a reminder again, that 
Uh, so a lot of people have been asking for 120 FPS. Uh, they've been asking to unlock 120 FPS uh, for Blood Hunt on PS5. Uh, they've been saying there's no such thing as unlocking it. It is set at 60 frames per second for some good reasons. Technical stuff in the background. I remember that it's it has to do with some PS5 uh, capability that forces it, that forces this game and its functionalities. It's they're in conflict with each other, and the best they can do is 60 frames per second. Maybe in the future they'll be able to code it to unlock it. There's no such thing as unlocking it, apparently. Like for some other for some other games, that's part of some conspiracies that some games have locked their games to a certain amount of frames per second. Um, I mean, some of them have, and it's been proven. It's not a conspiracy at all. But ever since some people have managed to find that some games have done this, now they're suspecting that all the games do this. They have all the capability of running at 200 frames per second, and it just it's just the devs that are unwilling to lock to to unlock those frames. Which is ridiculous. Anyways. That I'm going off topic. Closing words, the serious situation with our current player numbers is our top priority, and we are looking at various ways to fix it based on your feedback and the data we have. Again, 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 reminder. Data and feedback from the community. These are the two things that will make sure that we will guide how they are developing and improving this game. This has not changed since day one, apparently since the alpha. Uh, we want to make different adjustments and get potential fixes uh, out as soon as possible. See you soon for part two of the series where we will showcase more of the exciting things that we are working on. Good things, good things in the future. Good things coming for you, for us, uh, in the future for us. Um, so, we talked about this. We talked about this. Um, we are not supposed to mention this, but I'm going to mention it anyways. Um, someone asked, can we have more outfits, uh, like the fancy dresses? And Eric Nilsson, yet yeah, the art director at Blood Hunt, says next update should hopefully make you happy. Originally, I didn't want to show this, showcase this tweet, because fancy dresses doesn't necessarily mean anything, but confirmation from the other director that yes, there's going to be new, new things in the store because of course. Um, of course it's going to happen. Uh, next thing, in terms of like knowing when things are actually fixed, um, let me link this in the chat. Um, yes, David is saying like both Red Gas and Reload are fixed for next release and final testing at the moment. We knew that Reload was fixed internally, we did not know about the red gas, but apparently they managed to fix this. Again, it's about the sync issues with the ser with the server and the game client. Um, and someone that a lot of people know, uh, I've already asked about this. Let me just link it. 8-Bit Babe said, If you want people to come back, don't wait until the middle of July to fix the reload bug. If it's ready and has been tested, do an update just for the reload bug fix. I am a, uh, that would bring people back and also give them hope that things are getting better, just my opinion. I said, tooting my own horn here, I can do this because this is my show. Uh, <laughs> I agree, but I also remember David writing something about how the reload fix is tied to different systems and they need an update as well. So it's much more complicated than just fixing a single thing. It has to come in a package. Same thing for the gas bug, because it's all related. And I like that uh, Kanagi, people know Kanagi, but he is the senior dev ops engineer for Shock Mob. He says, yes, spot on. Plus the key uh, thing to mention in this article is rolling updates out faster. Good having confirmation and validation from someone, you know, about my thoughts which is basically just retranslating retranslating exactly what they've been saying to us. Um, but yeah, agreeing that if, if it was so simple to just get those bugs out, they would have already done it. 
okay? Because, you know, these are the main, like, these are two of the biggest bugs that people have been complained about, and that has ruined their gaming experience with Blood Hunt. So, yeah, if they could get those out, of course they would get them out. It's their game. Like, it's, you know, they want this game to perform well, they want more people to come back, so of course if they could do it immediately, they would do it immediately. Just a little bit of logic. Um, and yeah, these are the big things that are coming out this week. Uh, just want to add a few things, just a couple of more details for the people that did not know, but wanted confirmation. Uh, if a player ranks Obsidian, then he gets all the rewards from Bronze to Diamond 2, meaning we're talking about rank right now. Uh, yeah, and he said confirmation, like, yes, of course, like, it was already mentioned, but in case some people were wondering, I just thought I'd mention this. Yeah, of course, if you grind to higher rank, you get all the previous rewards that everyone else gets. Just a simple, just a simple thing. Uh, and another thing that... Uh, David has talked about actually a few hours ago, I believe. Uh, yeah, a few hours ago. Yes. <laughs> about cheaters, because that's something that a lot of people have been complaining about, and they've been just giving the same answer of like, yeah, well, we have an anti-cheat. Please report. Please use report functions. It's insane. In all the games, in all the games I've ever played, there's report functions, and people don't use them. It's just like there's so many cheaters, but we don't report them. So we're just telling you there's cheaters. You're the game. You're the people that have the game. You're in control of the game. You should be able to detect cheaters without us doing anything. But no, actually, just just report the cheaters. There's 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 a website. There's some in-game tools, even though I don't think that the in-game tools are actually like at the best state that they are right now, uh, and people have been complaining about like how it's hard sometimes, especially in duos and trios, to be able to report people um, as cheaters. I hope they do some 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 work on this. Uh, so, uh, Time to Play is asking, what about cheaters? Uh, we're doing many things, keep reporting them. Keep reporting them. One of which is adding multiple ways to catch blatant cheaters earlier, and combine that with other ways to make repeat cheating harder, plus of course hardening systems continuously when exploits are found and utilized by cheats. If you've ever, f if you've ever followed on Twitter people that are looking at anti-cheat or um, going into the technical sides of how cheating works, how cheating is prevalent, how you know the. Uh, Producing and selling of anti-cheat uh, of cheating uh, modules, cheating programs, uh, has been working. You know that it is an extremely complicated uh, issue, and the guys that are making the uh, that are making the cheats are just not stopping. It is <laughs> it is such an it's not necessarily an easy thing for them to do. But people, as long as there are people that are willing to pay for cheating programs, there's going to be people that are going to make the anti, that are going to make the cheating programs. You know, there's people that are going to make them, and it's apparently a very profitable venture for the people that are making that. And there are always, there are always on the lookout for another way to, uh, to cheat a game, like always. It's a constant, constant, constant battle. And the people that are working on anti-cheats have to be like some of the most cracked out people that exist, you know, in terms of like, imagine the amount of research that you have to do. Uh, and probably, I guess, communication between, I don't know if there's any communication between um, devs from different games and from different studios to ask each other, like, you know, information about how they're dealing with cheaters. I guess there's got to be, there's has to be a network of all of this. Um, but anyways, fighting cheaters is a constant battle. And yeah, the good thing about what he's saying there right now, what I'm reading between the lines is that right now we have, he, they have a lot more data than they used to have at the beginning of the game where you can 
see normal player behavior compared with cheater behavior. The more data you have on both of them, the easier and faster you can target the people that are cheaters. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, we can't do anything about that on our end. The only thing that we can do is just report when you see them. Just report when you see them. That's the best way that we can help the situation. And I'm going to keep banging that drum for years and years and years. Use the report functions. Write down, take screenshots, take, take, take phone pictures of the names of the people online so you can at least report them. Even if you don't have any proof, just, you know, drop the names so at least they can just like, you know, whenever they see the person online, they can check their behavior. Or even not when they're online, they can check their behavior. Uh, there's some people that have been, you know, find using the names, uh, looking on Tracker GG for Blood Hunt, looking at the, the player's profile and seeing like, you know, a, a level five that has like, you know, 70% accuracy on like th three or four guns, you know, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, like even, even, um, oh, what's his name? Even the best of players don't have that amount of accuracy. Let's just say. Uh, so keep keep using keep using the reports function, and it's basically you know, good luck to the people at, at Shark Mob that are working on this and on Easy Anti Cheat as well. Um, just good luck to them. Okay, and that about covers all the news. The other thing that I want to mention is if I'm not getting kicked out of the game. Which could happen at any point because this has happened many times before uh we have 18 days 15 hours left to season one retribution of blood hunt so that is about three weeks just about three weeks uh under three weeks and right now we know the state of the game as it currently is we can assume, because yes, they haven't given us like any info, like I've mentioned last week, about like how is the patch going to work? Are they going to patch the moment that the countdown goes to zero? Uh, are they like what are they like? How are they going to go about that? Um, like we don't have any details about this. So technically, if we look at this, if my math is good, we can assume a July 13th or 14th patch that will fix a bunch of things, improve a bunch of things, uh, change some things, and will bring us season two and a new season pass, a, a new a new battle pass, and probably changes to the store and. We don't know exactly. Probably new quests as well. I know that a lot of people. I know that a lot of people that I follow on, on uh, that are streaming, uh, they're quite fond of just like you know, doing the shooty shoots and uh, banging out the games and not worrying about quests. But there are, uh, I mean, th there are um, what is it like the uh, uh, the icons, the banners. Uh, there's a few. Um, I, there's there's a jacket at least that I know of. Um, there, there's there's quite a bunch of things that you can that you can get in terms of just you know you know, quick customization things uh, by completing the quests. And again, my theory is that some of the quests from that were specific to season one will not be available in season two. So again, if you can, if you care about this, if you care about the story a little bit. Um, you should be doing your quests. You have about three weeks to get that completed. So good luck to you. Um, so what else can we expect about the patch? Is it going to be... How can you say? Hold on. Let me get here. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me change here. Can I change here? Yes. We're changing to here. Hi. Yeah. Um... So what can we expect about this patch? I've already said what we can expect about the patch. But philosophically, what is it going to be? Is it going to be the solution 
to all of Blood Hunt's problems. Now, it's not going to be, but it's going to fix a lot of things. It won't save the game. It's going to be the patch that saves the game, but it will be the patch that will start to mend the game. Both, I mean, both the game and the community. The community, I think, will start to mend. There's going to be, like, the, the fact that it's probably, that the patch is going to actually, I know that the patch they probably wanted originally to get it out this month. Uh, I have the inkling that that was the original plan, but right now, since they have, still have a lot of things to test, and they have a season to, to, to release, like I've speculated last um, last week, they're going to bundle both of these things together into fixing everything and bringing a new, a new season. So, I think there's going to be a lot of noise that are going that's going to ha that's going to happen with this uh, with this patch because they're going to be able to showcase like fixing things, all of those bugs, all of those nasty bugs fixed. Season two coming in. No one's mentioned anything about changing the quality of ranked or changing the state of ranked, which is something that I'm a bit anxious about. I want to see like if there's going to be changes to ranked because it, you know it hasn't changed. It's still the the mode that is the, the grindiest and not the most fun to play. So if they're going to be if they're going to make changes to that, I would like them to announce that because there's been no mention. Right now the focus has been on matchmaking queues and getting players in. So I hope that something's going to be done with that because there's quite a few people that played the game or that are playing the game originally because it was going to be competitive. Uh when I played ranked solo uh last weekend, there's a bunch of names that I recognize, but there's also a huge bunch of names that I'd never seen before and that were in bronze level and that were absolutely cracked. Uh, so I guess ranked competitive, anything competitive, brings another kind of player, another breed of player inside the game. Not just the people that want to be good at this game and play this game because it's fun, because, you know, you love it. Um... So I'm hoping that they're going to have some news about changes to ranked to make it more fun, to make it less grind focus, even though like competitive, if you want to get your ranks, if you want to get like, there's always going to be an element of grind, whatever, whatever game you're playing, there's a bit of a grind. So we don't know. But right now, with what they've given us uh, in terms of information this week, uh, like I've mentioned before, shit sandwich it is a shit sandwich that we're all chomping on uh, that we're gonna be chomping on for three weeks uh but there's still there's still ways that you can spend your time inside the game and still have fun there's things to complete i personally i did not buy my battle pass uh like to get like the extra levels to get to 100 immediately i finished grinding my battle pass to level 100 like yesterday uh, so that was a thing that kept me going on and on inside the game. I still want to, like, for example, I want to level all my archetypes to level 20. That is not something that's going to be done before the end of the patch, before the patch arrives. Um, uh, there's some mastery challenges. There's the quests to do. There's, you know, uh, I haven't heard anyone that's, that said that they've done all of this. Um, if you, everyone should have a look at the mastery challenges there's some of them that are quite there's some of them that are easier than you think there's some of them that are quite fun there's some of them that you have to uh look at the archetype bonuses that you can equip sometimes on some characters more than others it's uh more of a you know it's more beneficent um yeah there's still there's still a lot of things that you can do inside the game uh but uh stories in the lore section as well i agree cthulhu um, yes, I, I specifically, and I've said this before, that I, um, 
uh, there's some unlocks that you can that you can do for lore in the journal section and the journal section sometimes in, at least in, in some sections it tells you like to unlock the next part of this you need to find an octahedron in the art gallery or you need to hang for sometimes at the train station and at some point after a certain amount of time the next entry will unlock um bunch of stuff there's plenty of things to do inside the game but right now uh they're not going to uh okay that's the thing i wanted to add uh, vincent cassie like vince if you're still there um there's a lot of things um i'd say there's a lot of games where the feedback sometimes that comes through is just uh, remove this remove shotguns remove enforcer uh remove anything that's inside the game uh remove a system entirely devs normally with all the work that they've put into the game into those functions into those classes into those characters into those systems they're absolutely not going to take the feedback of remove remove x as okay we need to remove x it means that there's an issue with x we need to figure out what it is make it better it's very 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 rare that game developers will agree to remove something they will transform they will adjust um i've seen this many for many many years playing world of warcraft where people are just just asking to remove some things and some systems and they've just like said okay what if we make these and that adjustment and it, sometimes there's some things that they completely remove or completely transformed like years later because they tried you know we're, we're gonna try with this thing and it kind of works so we're gonna try with other thing we're gonna take with this variation they will be like removing something is absolutely the last last option that they're going to do so we know that for enforcer they were absolutely not going to remove enforcer they were just gonna they were just gonna transform it and that's what we're going to do that's what we're going to see with the patch they're going to try to balance it um again i disagree with that they're going to just like tweak flesh of marble the way that it works with the um you know how flesh of marble ends i think I still think they should do with uh, just a temporary damage reduction instead of invulnerability. Um, but it's their game. They're going to test it out. They're going to see what what what's going to be happening with that. Um, and it's like shotguns. They didn't remove them from the game. Of course, they were going to change like the damage. They changed the damage. They changed the spread. Uh, shotguns no longer a mid range sniper. You can see that like it works so much better the way that the way that it is. And even then, some people are asking to remove shotguns from the game still after the patch. Like, uh, I don't see that happening. You know, they're going to they're going to tweak, they're going to change, they're going to test out different things, but they're absolutely not going to remove. Uh, it's same from the nine barrel, which people are going like, ugh, nine barrel. You know, the moment that they see that they see it, it's just like, oh, trash weapon. Yeah, I'm sorry. There was a there was a seasonal what is it? There was a um, uh, there was a seasonal challenge to down enemy players with nine barrel. To my surprise, so far I managed like four or f four or five, yesterday, uh, with the nine barrel. Um, you know, and, and, and people have been saying this. I've I've seen also that in the like blockchain streams, that people are going like nine barrel. This is terrible. Don't don't use this gun immediately kills two people with a nine barrel it's just like it's not that the game it's not that the, the the gun is bad it's like you're maybe not using it correctly it still shoots bullets you still can kill people with the basic pistol anyways that's all about that's about all i had to say right now about this uh i've covered all the news uh we've got things in the future uh we still have three weeks, a little less than three weeks before uh, the patch comes. Um, we're going to get more news about this, about the patch uh, this this incoming week. 
Uh, we have duels this weekend. We have the um, uh, we have the EGL tournament that's going to be happening. If you're watching this live, it's gonna hap is gonna start happening in about 20 minutes from now. So uh, it's at egl.tv. Um, I don't know if they're going to stream there, if it's going to be like streamed on Twitch. I don't know exactly the details, but I know that it's going to happen. Uh, so yeah, you can expect me to start continuing to, to continue doing this because like right now I'm, I'm liking this. And even though not a lot of people are following me or, you know, see, watching any of these things, I think it's good that we have in the Bloodhound community, more people spreading the news about what's happening, even though. You know, the news may be good, the news may be bad, and right now the news aren't especially bad, but at least we have something to look forward to in the future. So with that, uh, I will leave you to this, and I will say uh, probably see you next week. I am on Twitter at Kellyor, uh, also on Twitch at Kellyor, also on YouTube at Kellyor, where I'll be probably posting this uh, as well. So uh, I'm starting to I'm starting to do uh, some some actual streaming of Blood Hunt. Uh, start I'm starting to do this as soon as I figured out all the freaking sound settings inside. And, you know, from from just freaking mic. Um, and yeah, starting to get notifications. I'm starting. I want to I want to start like growing my channel on Twitter on, on Twitch. Maybe if it's something that I can do, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'll be here. So, uh, I expect to, I expect that I'll be here again next weekend talking about whatever's going to happen. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on the Twitter and yeah, I'll be the, still delivering the same kind of news for everyone. Uh, yeah. So have a good week. See you. <laughs>